XAVCS, XAVCHS, and XAVCSI. But what do they all mean? And out of the three options, which one should you choose? There's a lot to go on in this video. Not only are we gonna be looking at the quality that each codec gives you, but we're also gonna dive into the science behind the codex and actually see whether the better ones are actually worth the hassle. Today we are focusing solely on the Sony a7S III, but most of Sony's latest cameras, including the a7 IV and the new a7R5, all have these codecs, so they will be relevant to you. So let's kick things off with a good old A, B, and this time C test, and you tell me what you think looks better and which one you think looks worse. And even I'm interested to see the results. So what do you think? When I've been looking at the footage on the MacBook screen, even with a little bit of pixel peeping, it's hard to actually differentiate one from the other. And if I'm honest, even when I filmed in the XABC SI codec, I haven't been really blown away by it. And I'm not saying that it's a bad codec because obviously it's not a bad codec. But when you have XAVCS, which gives you already a really good quality image, it's kind of hard to beat, especially when the trade-off is massive file sizes. But there are times when you may want to use the Orange codec, and that's when you're doing things a little bit more detailed. But like I've said on this YouTube channel before, where is this footage going and will you actually benefit from shooting in that larger codec. Obviously this is just my opinion and I would actually really like to know what you think of the footage and if you've used any of the all inch codecs or H.265 for instance, let me know down in the comment section below. Really interested to see. But the thing is with these codecs, there's more to them than just the look of the image. And this is where the tables may change per se. What is the difference between these three codecs and why do we have these three codecs to choose from? Obviously it's to make the camera much more useful and usable for us as creators. Creators. Let's start off with XAVCS. XAVCS is a codec which has been around on Sony cameras for a while and it works on a H.264 codec which you've probably heard of once or twice before and it works on long GOP and why is this channel slowly becoming almost like Gerald Undone? Now that's more like it. Long GOP stands for long group of pictures, meaning that your camera will take an image or take all the information from every sensor on the very first frame. And then from that point onwards, it will only capture the information from the pixels which actually change within the image between the frames. But when it's doing this, it's also doing a combination of predictive frames and also bi-directional predictive frames. And because it's only capturing information from certain pixels in each frame, it means that the file sizes can be a lot smaller. But because it's only taking that information from certain pixels and predicting the rest, there's a high probability of artifacts appearing in your footage. Now, the second option is XAVCHS, which is H.265 codec, which is fairly new on the block. From what people say on the internet, H.265 will give you a better quality image, but also a much smaller file size in comparison to the XAVCS. But as you saw from the footage from the ABC test, the difference between the quality of footage of the H.264 and H.265, well, is there really much difference? But as I've already said, it does save on file sizes and the way it does that is by grouping pixels together and actually storing that information rather than having to deal with separate individual pixels. And by doing that, you should have less chance of having artifacts in your footage. So technically, therefore, it should be a better quality codec than what H.264 is. But unfortunately, due to the type of compression that it uses, it does mean that you need a better computer to be able to edit the footage. So far, when using H.265 on my MacBook Pro, I've had no issues, but it is something to be aware of. Now, time for the big boy, which is XAVCSI. And rather than using long GOP or long group of pictures, it actually uses all intra. In long GOP, how your camera takes that first image of every pixel in the first frame, all intra does the exact same thing, but for every single individual frame. So therefore you've got no grouping of pixels, you've got no predictive pixels, everything is captured in every single frame and stored on your memory card. Meaning that you shouldn't get any artifacts whatsoever, and also because there's no compression in the footage, means that your computer should be able to play back all intra codec footage a lot faster and a lot easier than what it would do with normal long GOP. But in return for all this goodness, you do have huge file sizes in comparison. 
on a 128 gigabyte card inside the Sony a7S III. XAVC HS with 10-bit 422 will actually give you the same amount of recording time, but this is down to two things which you should be aware of. These recording lengths are when the data rate is at its highest. And when you're recording an XAVC HS, that data rate is actually 200 megabytes per second. Whereas with XAVC S, to get 200 megabytes per second to compare it with XAVC HS, you have to increase it to 50 frames per second. Now, when you drop that frame rate down from 50 to 25, that data rate goes down from 200 down to 140 megabytes per second. And that gives you a recording length of one hour, 54 minutes. Now here I am talking about 50 frames per second, but I normally use 25 frames per second. So why are we talking about 50? Well, because in the A7S III, in H.265 or the XAVC HS codec, you cannot record in 25 frames per second. You can record at 50 and also 100 frames per second. And that's why everything in this video is having to be filmed at 50 frames per second to make it fair for you guys. Now the XAVC SI codec will only allow me to do 10-bit 422 in 50 frames per second. And that gives me a data rate of 500 megabytes per second, which is huge in comparison to the other two. And because of that, my recording length on a 128 gigabyte card falls straight down to 33 minutes. Once again, change that frame rate from 50 down to 25 and your data rate goes from 500 down to 250 and because of that, a 128 gigabyte card goes from 33 minutes to one hour, six minutes. And that's the end of the Gerald Undone vibe for this video. And all in all, we can talk numbers all day long. As creators, that's what we love to talk about. But at the end of the day, which one looks better for the kind of projects that you're having to work on? And most likely, which one is better for the workflow? What kind of capability do you have? For me personally, because I don't want to store loads and loads of footage and huge files, I only film in the XAVC S codec. I set my camera to 25 frames per second, 10-bit 422, hit record, and that's good enough for me. Obviously the H.265 codec or the XAVC HS will save me space and give me the same amount of quality, but I don't wanna to have to film in 50 frames per second. And I've got an A7S III for a reason. I wanna be able to film at 100 frames per second. And I wanna get that four times slow motion and using a 50p timeline inside Premiere Pro, it's just not gonna work for what I want. And as for using XAVC SI, not only does it create massive files for you to store on your computer or your hard drive, but unless you go out and buy CF Express Type A cards, you can't use that codec in S and Q mode. So yes, I own a Sony A7S III, and yes, I'm probably not using my camera to its full potential, but it allows me to go out and still film really good quality footage, and ultimately it means I can record for much longer. But obviously this is just my opinion, I'd love to hear what you think about the codecs down in the comment section below. Fingers crossed you've enjoyed the science lesson today. If you wanna to see more content like this, then make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you do, I'll see you right there. Thanks for watching.